Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. So this video particularly has been in the works for literally years. Uh, this is our, as a lot of people have been calling it, Timeline Theory Part 2. However, this is not a timeline theory. I am proposing that the Yu-Gi-Oh! timeline is way more expansive to just refer to it as a timeline, and this is more properly referred to as my Yu-Gi-Oh! multiverse theory. I am going to be putting every single anime from Duel Monsters all the way to Go Rush, and every manga, excluding Sevens and Go Rush, and every movie series on this timeline with dates, with theories, and with relations to all the other shows. But again, this is a multiverse. This is going to be a long freaking video, so please pause this, grab a drink, make dinner, do what you got to do, and whenever you're ready, without further ado, let's begin. This is my Yu-Gi-Oh! Multiverse Theory. I hope you guys enjoy. So how do we know that there is a multiverse that exists within Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, one of my favorite things to refer to is what I like to call the Jack Atlas effect. We know that there are many different versions of Jack Atlas. He appeared in the 5Ds anime, he appeared in the 5Ds manga, he appeared in the Arc 5 anime, and he most likely also appeared at some point in Sevens, considering how his D-Wheel was shown in the Dual History. Museum. So those are already four completely different characters of Jack Atlas. Now, it looks like the same Jack, but if you've ever watched the 5Ds anime or read the 5Ds manga or watched the Arc 5 anime, these are completely different versions of the same character. And so there are three, probably four, Jack Atlases that exist within the Yu-Gi-Oh! multiverse. We can also look at characters like Pegasus and Bandit Keith. These are two characters that actually died in the Duelist Kingdom arc in the manga-verse, but lived in the anime-verse, Pegasus even appearing in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. So it's very obvious at the very least that there is a main anime timeline and a main manga timeline. Now I believe that a good amount of shows and stories fall on these two timelines, but this might get confusing because I also believe that there are some manga stories and anime stories that fall on the inverse timelines meaning there is a manga that I believe is on the anime timeline, but I will explain that and provide you with visuals as the theory progresses. Oh, and if you need even more proof that a multiverse exists, it was even confirmed in canon. In the mobile app Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, Paradox, the villain of the Bonds Beyond Time movie, recently came to the game in August 2022. He has a fascinating conversation with Pegasus, who he attempted to kill on the anime timeline during the movie. Pegasus Pegasus states that even if Paradox kills him, Duel Monsters as a game will continue to exist. He states that history has split into various paths to which Paradox responds, various paths, parallel worlds. Are you speaking of a multiverse? Pegasus later goes on to say that this world, referring to Duel Links, unites numerous threads, different worlds, different histories. This is one of the most insane canon info drops that we have gotten related to the Yu-Gi-Oh! timeline in maybe the last decade. Just for the record, I will be leaving out Duel Links and where it fits into everything in this video, but maybe that's a topic I'll tackle down the road. And based on this conversation, maybe it's a good thing I waited a couple extra months to release this theory. So now that we have established the existence of multiple timelines using characters like Pegasus, Bandit Keith, Jack, as well as confirmation from the Duel Links mobile app, it's time to start at the beginning of the main anime timeline. I am starting with when the Duel Monsters anime began, not when all of the stuff in the ancient past happened, in hopes to make this as least confusing as possible. Duel Monsters begins in 1996, and so that is when our main anime timeline begins. 
I know when I did this theory five years ago, I started in the year 2000, but it has been confirmed by sources that the story of Yu-Gi-Oh! most likely begins the year it was released, and that is 1996. I'm also going to recap a lot of what I said in the original timeline theory, since it was literally five years ago, and I wouldn't want to force anyone to watch that or remember that in order to watch this video. That said, let's continue. I think it's safe to just assume the story of Duel Monsters lasts about two to three years, so we can Fast forward to 1998 is the year that Atem departs back to the afterlife. There is no concrete data as to how long DM lasts in terms of years, so this can definitely be debated, but what can't be debated is the start of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. The story of the GX anime takes place 10 years after Duel Monsters comes to an end, which in this case would be 2008. GX is very easy timeline-wise. We know it's on the main anime timeline because characters show up in the series, like the Paradox Brothers and Pegasus. Pegasus. We also know each season represents a year of time at the Academy. Four seasons means four years, and so GX ends when Judai graduates in the year 2011. Wow, just one year before I graduated high school. I am getting old. Anywho, here's where things get fun. Enter the 5Ds anime. The 5Ds anime is definitely one of the immediate branches of the main anime timeline, and I believe it occurs about 20 years after GX comes to an end. We know that Ushio in the original Yu-Gi-Oh! is the same Ushio who is a much older cop in 5Ds. I'm sure you remember this guy if you watched 5Ds. He literally duels and loses to Yusei like a bajillion times in the first 10 episodes, but Ushio is the key to strongly connecting the first three shows. Shows. He's probably around 15, 16 years old in 96 when the DM anime begins, and so for him to be 55-ish years old is certainly not a reach at all. Sure, he may look great for his age, but he more than passes for a 50-year-old, in my opinion. And so I believe that the Zero Reverse Disaster takes place in the year 2014, three years after GX comes to an end. Since Yusei was born in 2014 when Zero Reverse took place and was 18 when the show first started, that would place the beginning of 5Ds in the year 2032. 5Ds lasts three years, so 5Ds comes to an end in 2035. This is our first branch off of the main anime timeline, since we know there is a definitive timeline if Iliaster, and mainly Zone, does not interfere. If Zone doesn't tell Yusei about the future, the Mechlor genocide occurs probably around 200 years later, in the year 2235. This genocide sees the entire world destroyed due to synchro monsters going out of control. It's the closest you'll get to a full-blown apocalypse that actually occurs in any Yu-Gi-Oh! iteration. Zone interferes during the 5D storyline, and assumingly helps change the course of the future by alerting Yusei and the others that more research needs to be done in order to prevent the impending disaster. And with the first three shows placed on the anime timeline, we move on to Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. And this is certainly where things get a a little bit more confusing. Zexel, unlike 5Ds, does not have a definitive character like Ushio that has been confirmed by sources to tie the previous three or even the first two shows together, but something Zexel does have is the statue episode. Many theorists and fans of Zexel know exactly what I'm talking about, but in case you don't, take a quick look for yourself. That is from episode 15, Legendary Monsters from the Previous Shows. While some dismiss this as a minor easter egg, I think it has way more implications from a timeline perspective. Every single statue is a legendary monster from Duel Monsters or GX, and even Yuma refers to them as legendary monsters, which gives this scene way more weight from a theoretical perspective. Yuma clearly has a lot of admiration and respect for these monsters, Furthermore, Roku, the owner of these statues, is kind of odd on his own, using legendary monsters that only Yami Yugi was known for using, but that's a theory for another time, link down below. Anyway, I definitely think this ties Zexel to the first two shows, however, and very notably, there are no signs of 5Ds. No legendary 5Ds statue monsters, no synchros, and so my proposal, during 5Ds or after GX, 
is where the timeline splits. I propose that the timeline split occurs due to Iliaster's interference, and here's why. We have a timeline split already established due to zone interfering or not. If he doesn't interfere, Mechlite Genocide occurs. If he interferes but fails, the 5D's future occurs. I propose we also have a timeline where he interferes and succeeds, and that, my friends, is Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. I believe Zexel takes place around the year 2050 and goes until 2052. Now, the year doesn't really matter, but what's more important is it's either a split timeline before 5Ds even happens, or something much darker. Zexel could be the timeline if Zone beats Yusei and crashes the Ark Cradle successfully into Neo Domino City. Zone would then have successfully destroyed Synchros, hence why Synchros do not exist in Zexel, and maybe Heartland City is the city that was built on the ashes of Neo Domino. Definitely a few ways you can get here, but I truly believe Zexel is canon to the first two shows, and Iliaster interference seems like the most likely reason as to how the timeline split, since they are one of the only groups who are capable of traveling back in time and interfering with the Yu-Gi-Oh world on such a large scale. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not quite ready to get into Arc 5 yet, so we're going to pause the creation of the main anime timeline for now. Don't worry, we are not done with this timeline. I want to move on to the main manga timeline, starting with the Duel Monsters manga, which begins in 1996. Assuming the same time parameters we set for the anime, I am comfortable saying this story ends probably around 1998. The GX manga is pretty interesting, because it's never stated that it takes place 10 years after the end of Duel Monsters like the anime. However, Chapter 6 of the GX manga features a contest known as Ms. Duel Academy, a contest which Asuka ends up winning. She loses the duel, but wins the beauty contest, which sounds about GX. The contest was titled the 2004 Ms. Duel Academy, meaning the events of the GX manga must begin in 2004. The GX manga also has a really cool reference to a Battle City DVD, so I feel comfortable saying the GX manga takes place in the main manga-verse, and probably ends around the year 2006, since there is a minor time skip at the end. Now you probably noticed this big black spot in the manga timeline, and I think it's best to discuss what that is if you haven't figured it out already. There are three movies that also took place in the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise, those being Pyramid of Light, Bonds Beyond Time, and Dark Side of Dimensions, and no, I'm not counting the Season Zero movie, but that obviously takes place before the events of Duel Monsters. I think now is a good time to put these movies on the timeline. I think to many people's surprise, DSOD is not actually on the anime timeline. This movie was confirmed to take place six months after the Pharaoh left for the afterlife, and it was confirmed to take place as a sequel to the events of the manga, not the anime. Remember Pegasus's manga fate? Well, that's a big reason why he isn't in this movie at all. He's dead during Dark Side of Dimensions. And so DSOD actually goes right here between Duel Monsters and GX on the main manga timeline. Bonds Beyond Time is another pretty easy one. In one of the coolest movie concepts ever, we see our first three main protagonists, Yugi, Judai, and Yusei, all team up to defeat a member of Iliaster, Paradox. We know for a fact this movie takes place on the main anime timeline. During Yusei's final attack call in his duel against Zone, we see him think of all the important characters that he has traveled with and shared experiences with on his journey. Well, one of the characters we see Yusei think about is Paradox, the main villain of the Bonds Beyond Time movie. Now, for some unexplained reason, we don't see Yugi and Judai in this shot, but that's probably the only minor nitpick complaint I have about an otherwise fantastic sequence. The fact that the 5D's anime referenced the main villain of this movie confirms this movie is canon to the anime, and so Bonds Beyond Time takes place on the main anime timeline in 2034, probably right after the Crash Town arc, if you wanted a more pinpoint location. Last but not least, well, actually, maybe last and least, we have Pyramid of Light. This was my least favorite of the three movies by a pretty wide margin, and I feel Pyramid of Light has not really aged well over the years, not that it was ever super well received upon release anyway. There has been a crazy amount of internal debate within the community as to the relation of this movie when it comes to the original anime and manga. Many people believe this movie is not canon to the anime or manga, meaning it's an entirely own thing and takes place in a universe that has a completely different story than the ones the anime verse 
universe and mangaverse tell, others feel it's probably canon to the anime. I am aware the events of the movie are referenced in the English dub, but when constructing something like this, we always want to try and look at the original source material, and in the subbed Japanese version of the anime, this movie is never referenced. It's never even referenced when the crew goes back in the past during the Millennium World arc. To me, Pyramid of Light always felt like a movie that was released at the peak of Yu-Gi-Oh! to try to capitalize off of the massive international success that the first anime was, and well, it didn't really work. I'm not here to discuss the quality of the movie, but personally, I believe Pyramid of Light is not canon to the anime or manga timeline and exists on its own separate timeline probably taking place after the Doma arc, since the battle with the Great Leviathan is shown in one of the scenes during the Pyramid of Light movie. However, the Doma arc is an anime exclusive arc, so if you really want to count this movie as canon, it literally has to happen right around here. But to me, there is no proof that shows it's canon. The characters never referencing the character Anubis or the events of this movie indicates the opposite, and I just can't put it on the main anime timeline. Okay, so all three movies placed, let's continue on with the mangas. For those of you that have not read the 5Ds manga, it is completely different than the 5Ds anime, with manga-only characters like Sect playing a major role, as well as having a completely different plot. While it is impossible to pinpoint the dates this manga begins, it's also impossible to put it in relation to any other series. There are fusions, sure, but there is no mention of Kaiba Corp like there was in the 5Ds anime, Ushio doesn't appear Appear, and there is zero reference to any DM or GX character or event whatsoever. That is, until the end of the manga. In the final chapter, Yusei defeats Godwin in a duel, completing the ritual. Yusei is allowed to have one wish granted. It's at this point he is given some ideal, hypothetical choices. He can become the hero of Satellite, the king of the future, as we see a shot of Zone, who is present in the 5Ds anime, or to duel alongside the Duel Kings of History. And this shot is the wildest one from the 5Ds manga. It's a shot of Yusei standing alongside Judai and Yugi as they take on a seemingly paradox in the Bonds Beyond Time movie. What I believe is happening here is Yusei is being shown different futures of timelines that are currently happening or will occur. None of these are a straight path for a manga Yusei to obtain, and the only way that he could reach these events is if he wished for them to happen. Because Yusei is a Yu-Gi-Oh character, his one wish is to be with his friends that he made along the journey of the 5Ds manga, wishing away his opportunity to experience the realities that other Yusei's experienced in different universes. Kind of bizarre, but this also implies Yusei was supposed to be Zone, but that's a theory for another day. And what does this really mean? Well, this is going to get convoluted quickly, but because there is no data that suggests the 5Ds manga occurs after Duel Monsters or GX, I believe that the 5Ds manga actually takes place on a timeline separate to the main anime and main manga timeline. Manga Yusei got a glimpse into the other Yusei's realities, but opted to stay within his reality. Maybe the manga takes place around 2032 like its anime counterpart, but the year of occurrence is impossible to nail down outside of this bubble, which tells us it's between 2000 and 2099. We have no other clues. And so you can start to see the timeline's really splitting and fraying now, and we aren't even close to done. Let's keep it rolling with the Zexel manga. Just like every other spin-off, the Zexel manga has a completely different story than the Zexel anime, one without the Baryans entirely. And much like with the 5Ds manga, the Zexel manga has absolutely zero references or possible links to any of the previous three series. No synchros, and not even any fusions for crying out loud. Even the Zexel anime had a couple of fusions sprinkled throughout, and I know it's kind of boring, but I have a real issue putting the Zexel manga on the main anime manga, or even this alternate 5Ds manga timeline, with none of the prior mechanics showing up, and no even breadcrumbs that could link it to the previous shows, and so once again, I'm creating a new branch to this multiverse, and I believe the Zexel manga falls on a completely isolated time 
timeline, just like the 5Ds manga does, quite possibly in the same year I have the anime starting, around the year 2050. There are basically no clues to guide us what year this story takes place in, so it's a complete guess for this one. Alright, I, I hope you guys are still with me. Take a deep breath, because we now are throwing Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 into the mix. And let's start with the Arc 5 anime. I need to be clearer this time versus when I explained Arc 5 in the previous timeline theory over five years ago. For those of you that have not seen Arc 5, yes, characters like Jack Atlas and Alexis Rhodes do show up in this series, but no, they are not the same versions of those that we saw in 5Ds and GX respectively. I think this is where a lot of people who didn't see Arc 5 become confused. In the Arc 5 anime, there are four main dimensions that were were created due to Zark and Ray's battle, the Standard Dimension, the Synchro Dimension, the Xyz Dimension, and the Fusion Dimension. While each of these dimensions focused on the summoning method they were based on, it goes much deeper than that. The Synchro Dimension looks exactly like the setting of 5Ds, and the Xyz Dimension literally takes place in Heartland, the same city that Zexel took place in. You also have versions of characters from those previous shows that I like to refer to as legacy characters. Jack Atlas, Crow, Kaito, Asuka, and Edo, just to name a few. What's important to note is these legacy characters are not the same characters from their main shows. Most of them have completely different decks, slightly different personalities and quirks, and completely different backstories. These legacy characters showing up make it easy to want to put the Arc 5 anime right on the main anime timeline, right? Sure, but that's not actually what I believe. This is different than how I felt in 2016, but I actually do not believe that the Arc 5 anime is on the main anime timeline. I believe that Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 takes place around the year 2080 and runs right next to our main two timelines. And do you want to know a big reason I believe the Arc 5 anime is its own timeline? Because I believe the Arc 5 manga is actually canon to the animes, which would make the Arc 5 anime being canon to them impossible. I know we are now getting a bit crazy, but let me explain. The Arc 5 manga focuses on a completely different story than the anime does, and at the end of the story, Yuya is faced with the challenge of dueling against Eve, a character that has the ability to time travel thanks to Genesis Omega Dragon. Well, during Yuya's duel against her, she uses some pretty crazy monsters. The monsters she summons are Phantasm Emperor Trilogig, Time Lord Progeniter Vorpgate, and number XX Infinity Dark Hope. I mean, are you freaking kidding me? For those of you that might not realize the significance of these monsters, it's a Phantasm which was used by one of the main villains in GX, a Time Lord which was used by Zone, the main villain of 5Ds, and a Numbers Hope monster which was used by Yuma throughout Zexel. And if those monsters appearing weren't enough to get you hyped, Yuya even describes them as legendary duel monsters. Time Lords and Phantasms were only present in the 5Ds anime and the GX anime. How would manga Yuya know the significance of these monsters if this story didn't fall after the events of the GX 5Ds and even the Zexel anime? And Eve being able to time travel to get these cards or time travel to make cards based off these archetypes using Genesis Omega Dragon makes a ton of sense. So I firmly believe the Arc 5 manga is actually the first manga that takes place on the main anime timeline around the year 2080. I guess there still is a debate as to where the Arc 5 manga takes place in the anime verse. It could take place on the saved 5Ds timeline. It could take place on the Zexel timeline where I believe Iliaster succeeded. Or it could take place even before the Mechlord genocide. Although I don't really want to mess with that timeline too much. I'm just putting it here for simplicity's sakes. I guess you could definitely put it after Zexel. Again, with Genesis Omega Dragon, it is stated that Eve is able to travel through time using the power of that card so because of that she is allowed to travel through the anime verse at her own will and it doesn't really matter where you put it but i definitely think it's in the future 
of the main anime verse. Now back to the Arc 5 anime, unless the timeline splits after Zexel, which I guess it could happen, I just think the Arc 5 anime has too many inconsistencies to put it on the anime timeline, so I really believe it takes place around the year 2080 on a completely isolated branch of the multiverse. There is one thing that I want to touch on when it comes to this, and that's actually what happens in the final episode of the Zexel anime. With Yuma narrating at the end, he states that Tron Kaito and others are looking into opening a door to parallel worlds with a bunch of planets or dimensions floating around them. The very next episode chronologically is Arc 5 Episode 1, a parallel world that Kaito and the others may have failed to reach. Sure, we see a version of Kaito in Arc 5, but it's not Zexel Kaito. This might be nothing, but I do think it's fascinating and could be one of those things that also confirmed a Yu-Gi-Oh! multiverse way back then. And with this, we are done with all of our mangas and have a couple more anime left. Let's link into the Vrains. We finally have official confirmation for when one of these spin-offs take place. Before Vrains aired in an interview excerpt in February 2017, we got confirmation that Vrains takes place 10 years in the future. This means the story of Vrains takes place in 2027, and that is not up for debate. Well, do you notice something troublesome with the anime timeline? Due to Zero Reverse and Ushio, we know 5Ds has to take place around 2030, and Zexel probably takes place 20 years or so after. So, Vrains happened before 5Ds started? A show that featured a fully immersive virtual reality world called Link Vrains? No, 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 no. No way. I propose that the Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains anime does not fall on the anime timeline. I believe it is the only anime that actually falls on the main manga timeline in the year 2027, which means the complete manga-verse timeline looks something like this. Now, why do I think Vrains takes place on the manga side? Well, it's simple. Dark Side of Dimensions. The events of Dark Side of Dimensions and the technology that comes out of that movie leads to the creation of Link Vrains, and I truly believe that. I mean, think about the tech that Kaiba Corp created for this movie. Even the virtual sky of the augmented reality looks eerily similar to the virtual sky in Link Vrains. Some of the things Kaiba says right before Yugi and Aigami duel in the stadium is pretty eye-opening as well. He calls the body a prison for the soul. He also states that the soul will be freed with this next generation of dual disc. Doesn't that sound kind of like a VR world? In Vrains, you use your dual disc to travel to a virtual reality world, leaving the prison that is your body, and you can become any avatar and any persona that you choose, you enter a new era of cooperation over a worldwide network. Describes Link Vrains, doesn't it? Now sure, there's no virtual reality world in DSOD, but you can't tell me that this dream and vision of Kaiba's doesn't sound a hell of a lot like Link Vrains. We have all methods besides pendulums in Vrains, and because the manga timeline has different events than the anime timeline, it could just be that Synchros and XZs were established far earlier than they were on the anime timeline. Tech seems to develop insanely quickly in the manga-verse due to the DSOD movie, so I don't think this is a far far-fetched explanation at all. At the end of Reigns, Akira Zaizen talks about trying to reach the other dimensions that exist in the world, and so Reigns ends on a similar note to Zexel, hinting at the possibility of an insanely expansive Yu-Gi-Oh! multiverse. And much how I believe Arc 5, the series after Zexel, is an alternate universe, I also believe the show after Reigns is an alternate universe as well. Enter Rush. We so far have two Rush-based anime, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens and Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. Starting with Sevens, it's confirmed to take place in the not-so-distant future, so we'll say it takes place in 2020 on a brand new branch and ends in 2022. The reason I have Sevens on a different timeline branch is because it would just be impossible for it to occur on the main timeline or manga branch. We know it takes place around the 2020 year, and Rush duels are not a thing in the Vrains anime, or in any of the other anime. It is a brand new way to duel created by the game's inventor Odo Yuga. Also, the previously mentioned Goha duels seem to be nothing like the Master Rule duels that we are all familiar with, 
in the previous anime. Sure, Jack Atlas's bike is in the Duel History Museum. We see Dark Magician, Blue Eyes, and other legendary monsters, but there's absolutely nothing definitive that ties it to any other show. And because of when the series takes place, it has to be on another timeline. Go Rush is the direct sequel show to Sevens and is incredibly confusing as well. There are plenty of variants, as I call them, which are characters that look very similar to the Sevens counterparts and even have the same last names as the Seven counterparts. Rovian Kirishima instead of Roman Kirishima, the Odo Twins instead of Odo Yuga, Asuka Matsuba instead of Asana Matsuba. It was widely believed that these characters were maybe the children of the Seven cast, but the world of Go Rush just seems too different. Goha Corporation is gone, it's now Goha Company, and in this world, Goha Company created Rush Duels, not Yuga. Also, equip spells are a thing, but we have seen no indication so far that fusions or maximums exist, even though they became pretty common during Sevens. On top of all of this, Udeus, our main character, got his dual disc from a man that closely resembles Yuga before the show began. The dual disc itself is a Sevens dual disc, which was recognized by a character named Goha Yuna, who used Yuga's deck and ace monster. So what the hell is going on here? While we will probably get major answers soon, right now, I believe that Go Rush is a sequel and also an AU in relation to Sevens. At the end of Sevens, Yuga dueled Otis and created a hyperspace which saw him leave for two years. When Yuga comes back to Earth, we see a glimpse of him and he looks entirely different than when he left, which even had some fans saying that he looked like a new version of Otis. Now, Otis was a character that set Yuga on his journey, and wouldn't it be fitting if in those two years due to the hyperspace, Yuga traveled to this dimension, gave Udeus his dual disc, and set Udeus on his journey the same way that Otis did for Yuga at the start of Sevens. That's what I believe happened. We have already seen dimensional travel and variant characters exist in Arc 5, so I don't see why it wouldn't be possible here. I think that Go Rush is an alternate dimension to the one that Sevens exists on, and the show begins around 2022, within the two years that Yuga was gone for. If you have your heart set on calling Go Rush a direct sequel to Sevens, then the show must take place like a hundred years after Sevens ends, given how old some of the related characters are in Go Rush. Jesus Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my Yu-Gi-Oh! Multiverse Theory. And my god, was that a monster of a project. I know the meme of me never releasing this video has been going on for the better part of maybe three or four years now. But man, I am just so excited to be uh, done with this theory, just in the sense that I'm able to finally share it with you guys. I've had this theory and this multiverse idea on my mind for literal years now, but this was such a beast of a project to do that I it just... It just took forever, so I'm just so thankful that I was able to release it. I know Spell Commander 91 released a theory uh, pretty much going over the timeline as well a few weeks ago. I'm hoping this theory is pretty different than his, so there's two different viewing experiences. But definitely check out his timeline theory if you haven't already. I haven't watched it. I didn't want my opinions on my own theory to change, but I'm sure it's super, super good. And guys... That wraps it up. Please let me know your thoughts on what is one of the most talked about, theorized things probably in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! anime and manga. Let me know if you agree with my uh, kind of placements here. Let me know some things you think I may have missed. And no matter what, whether you agree or completely disagree, I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. A special thank you to my Platinum Tier Patron, Panther J, to my Diamond Tier Patrons, Jesse Wood and Latrell Smith, and to my Egyptian God Tier Patrons, Kakapakapu, Sin Cloud, and Kyle. Thank you to everyone who is a patron of mine or a YouTube channel member. You guys help me out tremendously. You help out the channel tremendously. And be sure to check out my YouTube channel membership feature and my Patreon for more channel exclusive perks. Be sure to check 
out my channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! anime content. I also stream over on Twitch. The link for that channel will be in the description. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the comments, and I hope you have an amazing day.